Hillary Clinton responded to a lawsuit about her use of a private email server yesterday, submitting formal answers under penalty of perjury, saying 21 times in response to requests for information she did not recall. Which, you know, it's unfortunate. They asked her her middle name, and it was like, did not recall. I don't know. Asked, all the time. Asked her what month it was. Do not recall. That's a hard one, too. She really did say did not recall on, on the most basic of questions. 21 times. So these are similar to her previous statements to the FBI. At the same time, Donald Trump continued to hammer Secretary Clinton in her handling of classified materials and suggested he'd also have the FBI looked into. The emails. Yes. I want to ask you about just one aspect of them, and that's what you told the American people. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified materials. I am confident that I never sent nor received any information that was classified at the time. I had uh, not sent uh, classified material nor received anything uh, marked classified. After a long investigation, FBI Director James Comey said none of those things that you told the American public were true. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to, uh, in my view, clarify. Director Comey said that my answers were truthful and what I've said is consistent with what I have told the American people. That there were decisions discussed and made to classify retroactively certain of the emails. I was communicating with over 300 people in my emailing. They certainly did not believe and had no reason to believe that what they were sending was classified. Now, in retrospect, different agencies come in and say, well, it should have been. But that's not what was happening in real time. But in a congressional hearing on July 7th, Director Comey directly contradicted what you had told the public. Secretary Clinton said there was nothing marked classified on her emails either sent or received. Was that true? That's not true. Secretary, Secretary Clinton, Clinton said I did not email any classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. Was that true? Now, there was classified material emailed. He directly contradicted what well, you said. Let me just, just yeah. he not only directly contradicted what you said, he also said in that hearing that you were extremely careless and negligent. Well, Chris, I looked at the whole transcript of everything that was said, and what I believe is, number one, I made a mistake not using two different email addresses. I have said that and I repeat it again today. It is certainly not anything that I ever would do again. I take classification seriously. I relied on and had every reason to rely on the judgments of the professionals with whom I worked. And so in retrospect, maybe some people are saying, well, those, among those 300 people, they made the wrong call. At the time, there was no reason, in my view, to doubt the professionalism and the determination by the people who work every single day on behalf of our country. Mr. President, when did you first learn that Hillary Clinton used an email system outside the U.S. government for uh, official business while she was Secretary of State? Uh, at the same time, uh, everybody else learned it through news reports. Were you disappointed? Uh, let me just say that Hillary Clinton is and has been an outstanding public servant. She was a great Secretary of State for me. Uh, the policy of my administration is to encourage transparency, uh, and that's why my emails, the BlackBerry that I carry around, uh, all those records are uh, available and, and archived. And I'm glad that uh, Hillary is uh, instructed that uh, those emails uh, that had to do with official business need to be disclosed. Well, you say that you have the most transparent administration ever. You said it again just a couple of weeks ago. It's but true. How does this square with that? Well, I, the, uh, I, I think that the fact that she's going to be putting them forward uh, will allow us to make sure that uh, people have the information they need. And we're going to... So I am delighted, delighted to be here with you and with my fellow candidates. And I know that people across the country are following us on social media as well. By the way, you may have seen that I recently launched a Snapchat account. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
those messages disappear all by themselves. Family. And Hillary Clinton continues to promote her book and give Republicans plenty of political ammunition if she decides to run for president in 2016. Despite earning more than a hundred million bucks since they left the White House, Clinton tells The Guardian newspaper her and her husband are still quote, not truly well off, really, and she says <laughs> they're unlike other multimillionaires because, quote, we've done it through uh, the dint of hard work. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, this follows her comment about them struggling to afford mortgages on their estates. Critics say it's another example of Clinton being out of touch with working Americans. Of their estates? Yeah, estates. The more than one. I Well, I don't know what to do with my millions. It's very Me tough. Me either. It's very tough. Time for an early start. But FBI Director James Comey did not mince words, laying out a litany of ways that Clinton and her State Department staff should have known better, calling them, quote, extremely careless in the handling of classified information. No charges are appropriate in this case. With those seven words, FBI Director James Comey spared Hillary Clinton the devastating prospect of an FBI indictment just four months from Election Day. In looking back at our investigations into the mishandling or removal of classified information, we cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. However, in a surprise announcement of the conclusion of what he called a painstaking investigation, Director Comey issued damning criticism of the presumptive Democratic nominee's use of multiple private email servers. Although we did not find clear evidence that Secretary Clinton or her colleagues intended to violate laws governing the handling of classified information, there is evidence that they were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. I found that of the 30,000 emails Clinton turned over, 110 emails contained classified information at the time they were sent or received, including classifications ranging from top secret, the highest level, to secret and confidential, the lowest level of classification. The FBI's finding contradicts Secretary Clinton's evolving explanations of her email use, beginning with her claim that none of the information she read or emailed was sensitive when she read or sent them, implying they were only classified after the fact. I am confident that I never sent nor received any information that was classified at the time it was sent and received. In fact, the FBI found numerous emails containing information which was classified at the time they were sent. Wow. Director Comey also addressed the candidate's more recent claims that none of the emails were marked as classified. I'm confident that this process will prove that I never sent nor received uh, any um, any email that was marked classified. In fact, the process found that a small number of emails were marked classified at the time she and her staff sent them. Comey also questioned Secretary Clinton's argument that her private servers were never breached. Well, the system we used was set up for um, President Clinton's office, and it had numerous safeguards. Uh, it was on property guarded by the Secret Service, and there were no security breaches. In fact, Comey concluded that while the FBI found no direct evidence of such breaches, we assess it is possible that hostile actors gained access to Secretary Clinton's personal email account. Last week, the American people learned that Cheryl Mills, Secretary Clinton's longtime confidant and former State Department Chief of Staff, and Heather Samuelson, counsel to Secretary Clinton in the State Department, were granted immunity for production of their laptops. Why were they not targets of the FBI's criminal investigation? Well, a target is someone on whom you have sufficient evidence to indict. A subject is someone whose conduct at some point during the investigation falls within the scope of the investigation. So sort of certainly with respect to Ms. Mills, at least initially, because she was an email correspondent, uh, she was a subject of the investigation. Did the FBI find classified information? All right, let's bring in our panel of NBC News political correspondents that are here this weekend. Kelly O'Donnell, Casey Hunt. Andrea Mitchell and Katie Turr, welcome to all of you. Uh, Donald Trump has his own reaction to the FBI yeah. interview, uh, and he's already come to a conclusion. This is what he quote. It was just announced by sources that no charges will be brought against crooked Hillary Clinton. Like I said, the system is totally rigged. Andrea Mitchell, even if she's exonerated, 
uh, Donald Trump already has his talking point, thanks to the tarmac meeting. Thanks to the tarmac. Well, first of all, he's been calling her crooked Hillary for quite a while. So sure. that is branding her in advance. But the tarmac meeting, such an unforced error, inexplicably, uh, Bill Clinton, the schmoozer in chief, we all know, we, oh, there's a motorcade. Well, let me go over it. But something should have told this former constitutional law professor from Arkansas not to do it. Something should have told Loretta Lynch to say, Mr. President, let's go down. I know it was 108 degrees. We checked on the tarmac. They could have walked into the terminal, any place in public. Yeah. To be on that plane for 30 minutes now, no matter what happens, if she is exonerated, uh, she will still be, there will still be suspicions, not only among, uh, you know, the Donald Trump right. people, but among a lot of other people. They will, there will be suspicions that it was politically influenced. This is absolutely a disastrous uh, decision on their part. And it plays directly into the narrative that the Donald Trump campaign sure. is trying to put forth, that Hillary Clinton is not to be trusted, that there are one set of rules for her, for the Clintons, for politicians in general, and another set of rules for everybody else. The Lynch meeting did that. Uh, this meeting with the FBI could potentially do that if it results in no charges being brought. And the Trump campaign is seeing this as an opportunity, no matter what happens, to use it against her as her, as saying that she's just not trustworthy. And it's something of a pattern, right, with the Clintons. You heard Hillary Clinton herself talking about that there. Oh, I do something, the right thinks that it's a grand conspiracy. But the reality is they've done things, many things in public life that looking back, they say they shouldn't have done, but they look strange. The email use in and of itself. She says, I did it for convenience. It turns out, you know, I would have done it differently if I had another chance. It's, it's, a, it's a long line of things that fits into a pattern that Trump That's very e That you could get an open source. But last and October, I and you I were prepared to say uh, she hadn't jeopardized, well, and the question is, well, can you still say that? I continue to believe that she has not jeopardized America's national security. Now, what I've also said is that, and she's acknowledged, that there's, there's a a carelessness in terms of managing emails that she has owned and she recognizes but I uh, but I also a batch of Clinton emails out this morning is raising questions about a donor to the Clinton Foundation and how he ended up on a government intelligence advisory board. ABC's Brian Ross is here with more on that story. Good morning, Brian. Well, good morning, Amy. The newly released State Department emails being made public here this morning reveal how Under Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, a major donor to the Clinton Foundation, was put on a sensitive government security advisory board, even though he had no known experience in the area. Members of the State Department's International Security Advisory Board include some of the country's most prominent figures on American nuclear strategy, all with top secret clearances. But in 2011, the Clinton State Department also added this man, Rajiv Fernando, a wealthy Chicago commodities broker with no known connection to the national security world. I'd like to invite to the stage Raj Fernando. What he was known for before and after his appointment was raising and giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to Democratic campaigns and as much as $250,000 to the Clinton Foundation. ABC News, you have just a second to talk here. When we approached Fernando at the 2012 Democratic Convention... How did you get appointed to that board? Can you talk about that? How did you know my name, out of curiosity? He became upset, and we were threatened with arrest. Yeah, this is basically, I think the property will be arrested. I'll be arrested for, for asking questions of this man? But now the new set of State Department emails, obtained after a lawsuit brought by Citizens United, reveals the role of Clinton Chief of Staff Cheryl Mills in appointing the big donor, with a senior career official using the shorthand S, a common reference to Secretary Clinton. The true answer is simply that S staff, Cheryl Mills, added him. Raj was not on the list sent to S. He was added at their insistence. I don't know who will be giving money. At her confirmation hearing, Clinton vowed foundation donors would not receive special treatment. That will not influence, it will not be in the atmosphere. The new Clinton emails also show that when ABC began asking questions about the appointment of Fernando in 2011, top Clinton aide Cheryl Mills asked the press officer to stall for 24 hours. The very next day, Fernando submitted his resignation from the prestigious board. 
The Clinton campaign declined to comment on our story, and the State Department said it's not unusual for the Secretary's Chief of Staff to play a role. As for Fernando, he has continued to raise big dollars for the Clinton campaign and has given more than a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation. In fact, he'll be one of her superdelegates at next month's convention, Amy. And Brian, this morning there is another new report about Hillary's emails on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, linking them to some potentially sensitive messages about drone strikes overseas. That's right. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the ongoing FBI investigation is focusing on these messages sent by American diplomats in Pakistan about pending drone attacks which ended up on her personal email server. But the journal also says the messages were vaguely worded and did not use the terms CIA or drone. ABC News has not been able to independently confirm the journal's report, Amy.